everybody. This is BC2001. And today we got uh, Ravi joining us. And we're going to do a Steam Box breakdown. It is, I mean, honestly, it's a system that I am looking forward to because I'll be able to import my um, current catalog over and not have to worry about rebuying them for every system out there. So we, we took a little idea. Well, Ravi actually took an idea and figured we'd run with it. Is assemble our own Steam Box. Get an idea of what, what specs they already released and build it and see how much it would cost us and what we could do to change it a little bit, make, maybe make it better. Today we're going to do the low end Steam Box, which you heard any um, news on how much the low end is going to cost yet? Uh, no, I, I don't think they released anything for pricing uh, as of yet, but uh, what we've got here is going to cost a little under $900, not including operating system. No, well, they're using the uh, Steam Box. Well, they're using a Linux-based operating system, so okay. you figure the Steam OS is probably going to be dirt cheap. Let me turn on the light. Oh, uh, is that? Well, they they've already said the Steam OS will be free. It's just that hasn't been released yet. So, yeah, so you can just go ahead and count out the operating system if you want to do okay. build your own Steam Box. So, um, what we have here today is a Intel Core Three i3. Excuse me. 3.4 gigahertz dual core processor. Excuse me. Toby, step outside, please. Thank you. A ASRock H87M ITX Mini ITX LGA 1150 motherboard, which isn't a bad, you know, that's not a bad price for it. Um, we're going to go into deeper into the, each specs of each piece here in a minute. We have 16 gigs of Viper Patriot DDR3 1600, you know, 1600 memory. A Seagate 1 terabyte 3.5, 72, you know, 100 RPM. It's basic standard. Oh, actually, this is a hybrid internal hard drive. A EVGA GeForce GTX 760, 2 gigs of RAM video card, a, where is that, what is the uh, case, Bitfinx? So, uh, Bit Phoenix Prodigy. Phoenix, wow, Prodigy, black mini tower, ITX tower case. Uh, power supply, a Roseville Capstone, 450 watts, 80 plus, gold certified, the good stuff. And Asus BC, it's a Blu-ray player, nobody really actually cares, as long as it plays Blu-rays or DVDs. Nobody really That's looks at that stuff anymore. And then, uh, if, if it were my system, I probably wouldn't even look at it. It's about 60 bucks where a DVD burner would be 20 or so. Exactly. Yeah. Now, I see, but the, the nice part about Blu ray is you get the Blu ray quality. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the Intel first. We have an Intel i3. i3, you know, Intel is always known for being the best in uh, processors, and I'm pretty sure some AMD fanatic out there is going to argue with me about it, but when it comes to it, Intel is a Porsche, AMD is the Toyota. They both do the same damn thing. One's prettier and more expensive than the other. So, yeah, well, a little bit more complicated than that, but I'll give it to you. Um, simplified. The 30 is a decent, decent choice of a cheaper chip. Uh, honestly, if I was going with a lower end chip like this, I probably would go AMD for the, uh, uh, um, AMDs are a little bit cheaper in this price range, uh, for similar performance, and, uh, if you go with AMD GPU, depending on which one you do, you can actually crossfire them and get better, uh, GPU performance, so. There you go, there's another thought about it, if you want a nice little, uh, better GPU performance, crossfire the damn things. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, it runs 3.4 gigahertz, two cores, of course, being a dual core. Um, L1, L2, L3 cache, which I don't know, let me let me remember what the cache does. It oh god, that class was so many years ago. Um, help me out here. I'm I'm I'm, I'm having a, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, the cache is just the uh, data waiting to go through, go through and be processed. Uh, 
Yeah. Kind of like a the buffer. faster version of the RAM right yep. on the chip. Okay, that's right. That's right. Wow. I don't know how I know I know I know how fast that glass I shut through it. Never mind, it was boring. Hyper threading, which is always good. Um, integrated graphics, Intel HD graphics, forty four hundred. Fascinating. And so on. So it's not a bad chip all in all. It'll do the job. It'll get it done. Uh, let's back up and let's take a look at this motherboard. Now the motherboard is, of course, one of the most important pieces to a computer. Because if you don't have a motherboard, then you ain't got a computer. I mean, you know, they're all important, but you can't really put together a computer without a motherboard. So the ASRock, it's a mini ATX, which ATX is pretty much standard nowadays. Um, unless you get like... Well, the, it's actually mini ITX. Uh, mini, wh what did I say? ATX? Yep. Wow. Wow. A ATX is standard. Uh, ITX, you don't see them that often, but when you're trying to build small... Can't really go with anything else. Yeah. Okay. ITX. Wow. <laughs> Let me get in there closer. It holds the uh, Intel H87 chipsets. Um, memory slot. It has two. Well, it only has two slots. That kind of sucks. But okay. But you can ram. You can ram big, big sticks of RAM in there. Yeah. Wow. I, I am sounding it'll, it'll, all sounds of yeah, technical today. Forth, so. Yeah. Well. Yeah. We're doing. We're doing it. So it's a. Uh, Two sticks of 240 pin dim, and I'm probably speaking Greek to some people. It's okay, it's Greek to me, even though I know what it means. Um, memory type it handles DDR3, any one of those 1066, uh, 1333, or 1600. Of course, 1600 is going to be your faster RAM. Um, max memory 16 gigabytes which is what we're doing, we're maxing it out right now. It does support RAID. Anybody ever want to set up a RAID system, good luck. It's a pain in the ass. Or at least every time I've tried to do it, it is. Uh, there's probably somebody out there that can, like, I don't know, can you set up a RAID system? Oh, yeah, I do it quite frequently. Pain in the ass, isn't it? Eh, not really. Eh, it takes 20 extra minutes, maybe. That's what I'm saying, pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> Onboard video. Depends on the CPU. So if the CPU supports the uh, video, then it'll run it. Uh, Crossfire which, support. Uh, Go ahead. Which this uh, this uh, the chip we're using does support uh, integrated video, but we're not going to be using that. Uh, we do have a dedicated GPU. Yes, we do. Does not support Crossfire. SLIs support no SATA. There are four. Six gigabyte SATA? Yeah, that sounds right. Um, spots, you know, that's for your optical drive, your, if you want to add more um, hard drives in there, mostly you'll just use two. Depending on what you can fit in there. And one yeah, ESA. We'll one. Yeah. Well, now we'll have one for the optical drive. Oh, well, we yeah, the optical drive. And a hard drive. Yeah. Um, and there's one eSATA in there. Onboard Ethernet, of course, you know, supports up to gigabit. And it has onboard 3.0 headers. Nice. USB 3.0. Fast. Yep. Let's take a look at the RAM now. So we're looking at some Patriot. What is this, Viper? Patriot, yep. Patriot yeah. Viper 3. Yep, Viper 3. 16 gigabytes. It'll be... Two sticks of 8 gigabytes DDR3 1600 memory, fastest RAM for the board, and it'll max it out. Not a bad little deal. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, one, uh, I, I would like to make a note. If you're building this system at home, the reason we went with 16 gigs is because that's what the Steam Box uh, specs didn't mention, 8 or 4 or anything. It does not make any sense to put 16 gigabytes RAM in this system. Uh, 8 or 4 would make make a lot more sense. Well, honestly, 4 is standard issue for the majority of the computers today, okay? You go out and buy a computer that's running 7 or 8, there's going to be at least 4 gigs. If you buy something with less than 4 gigs, you're wasting your money. Don't waste your time. Well, well I'm not saying go less than 4. 4 for this system, but uh, I'd probably go ahead and throw 8 in. Yeah, definitely. Let's see. 8 is pretty standard for me. Absolutely. Uh, we got a Seagate one terabyte hybrid drive. 
uh, Seagate, decent, decent hard drives. Through the years, they've had bad hard drives. Through the years, they've had great hard drives. Same with Western Digital and um, Maxter. Is Maxter still around? Um, I don't think so, actually. Um, Toshiba makes a really I, shitty hard drive. I, I am a big fan of Seagate. I use, uh, usually whenever I'm putting a terabyte, I do. I have a specific one terabyte hard drive I use from them. Um, one note, it is a hybrid drive with an 8 gigabyte cache um, as an SSD. Which is but cool. this this drive costs about a hundred, and a regular one terabyte costs about sixty. For that forty dollar price difference, you can go out and get a thirty two gigabyte uh, SSD and call and it a day. Set up the same kind of cache system for the same price. It's a little bit more complicated, but uh, the only you other end up issue with a thirty two gigabyte cache instead of uh, an eight. Just eight. The only yeah. issue with that is space. Uh, space could be an issue, but uh, we got. Uh, no, we're getting to the. Yeah, we we we're yeah, we got enough room in there. But in yeah. that case, it's plenty big. So we have the EVGA GeForce GTX 7600, two gigs of DDR5. Enough said. Actually, anybody? Uh, 760. What did I say? Seven. What did I say? 7600. 7600. Wow, 760. Man, I am off my game today. Uh, the one I chose for this list does have the ACX core. I would imagine um, the final scene box version is going to be one of the one with the factory cooling on it. But uh, the EVGA ACX core is very nice, and uh, the card itself, 760, is by far one of my favorites to use these days. It's got great performance for the price, about 250 bucks, and uh, can't can't really beat it. Well, no, you can't. That's actually pretty damn good. Um, yeah, like I said, two gigs of DDR5. The core clock is 1.7 gigahertz. Fans, yes. All that good stuff. The dual DVI links, display port, HDMI. I mean, you can't beat that. It'll support dual monitor, if not three. But at that point, it doesn't matter. So let's see. Now we're going down to the case. Uh, let's see. We have the Bit Phoenix. Big ass part numbers, I'm not going to run through. It's ITX tower. It's black. No power supply. Internal 5.25 5 bays 1. What is that? That's, um, that's a DVD drive. Internal 3.5 bays. There's five of them. Okay. So this will have more than enough room to ram as much hard drive as you want. You can get up to at least five hard drives. And an SSD in there, which isn't bad. So it'll take. Yeah, I, I haven't uh, I haven't personally worked in this space before, but I've, I've heard a lot of great things, and this is a uh, really a go-to for the mini ICX cases. Um, but yeah, it's got plenty of space. I've seen someone put a Titan in there for it. It's it's really nice case for the size. Uh, one note: the Steam box uh, will will be uh, in a like a HTPC case. So it's not going to be like a cube. It's going to be kind of, kind of like a direct TV box or something like that. On that uh, side. But, uh, okay. but I did go with this. Uh, for when you're building, it's a little bit easier to work with. And um, this, this is better in my opinion. Uh, We're going to go with a uh, Rosewill Capstone 450 watt 80 plus gold certified power supply. Uh, I don't really actually see any, you know, issues with this. It gives out enough juice. It's probably went out there better, but, hey, see, what is it, $62, something like that? Oh, 60. Um, 60, okay, not a bad deal. It, it has enough juice to handle the work, and, you know, it fits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for this, I would, uh, one thing I might, might change, maybe switch it over to something modular, but it's not really a necessity. Nope. Um, the modular version is about ten dollars more. Y'all want to go with that? Mm. Um, and it's uh, eighty plus gold certified, which means it's it's very efficient. Um, not going to be wasting a whole lot of power transferring from AC to DC, which is always a good thing. Absolutely, it helps your power bill out a little bit. Heck yeah, that that that, that way you're not you know leaving your computer on all night and your power bill being eight hundred dollars. Yeah, I'm a little bit guilty of that, but uh. <laughs> 
All right, so last but not least, we have the AC Blu-ray player. Our Asus, wow. Asus Blu-ray player. Excuse me, I'm off my game today. Um, it has all these wonderful ROM speeds. CD-ROM speeds 48x. CDR speeds 48x. Yada, yada, yada. Big list, you guys can read it. It's your everyday standard Blu-ray player. Probably a little bit faster than regular and decent price, so you can't beat that. And Asus is not a bad uh, manufacturer. So, hey, all in all, not a bad deal. So that was... Well, go ahead. Oh, uh, well, I just want to get some other options there. Uh, if y'all if y'all don't want to play play Blu-rays, uh, it's not a Blu-ray writer, so uh, unless you're playing Blu-ray movies, you might as well go ahead and save uh, 40 bucks and grab a regular DVD burner for you know, about 20 bucks. Yeah, um, very true. But again, we're trying to match the Steam box here, and that will have a Blu-ray player. Well, there you go. And, you know, you can, like, like we said about the RAM, you can drop it down to 8 gigs and it'll probably be just fine. Especially for the lower end one. I, I wouldn't even say probably. Uh, it will definitely be just fine with 8 gigs of RAM. That's very true. But, I mean, for all in all, less than $900, you can have a computer that will kick ass. Yeah. I mean, seriously, this, this is actually a pretty kick ass little computer. Yeah, and uh, if, uh, you know, we'll have the uh, Eason Park picker link down in the description for y'all, and uh, mm -hmm. I'll also have Kelly throw my email down there if you, for whatever reason, aren't comfortable with building your own or just don't have the time, uh, shoot me an email, and I'll uh, we can talk about getting you something custom built up. There you go. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will catch you guys.